Good evening, I'm Rick Dancer. Well, today is Labor Day, and uh, for many of us in Oregon, uh, we remember two years ago when uh, a freak storm, the perfect storm came in and burned up so much of Oregon. So many people lost so much. And it didn't just happen in the Holiday Farm fire. It happened down in the Archie Creek fire, down in Southern Oregon, up in Northern part of Oregon, <clears throat> and all over the West Coast. Uh, it was a disaster. Um, so tonight on our show, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to air a story, not about th th that specifically, but a couple of women and how they responded to help their neighbors with just flowers. Um, it's an amazing story. <clears throat> and it shows that kind of that human spirit and what, what we're capable of when we put ourselves together. Secondly, I want to show, because it is Labor Day, um, I find it's a time to honor people uh, to me. Who, who did amazing things in our community. And a couple of years ago, it's been probably 10 years, uh, some producers, Kevin uh, Curry, Devin Lyons, and myself, produced a documentary on Senator Mark Hatfield. And on the end of the documentary, there's a link where you can go to watch the whole thing. But we're gonna show you a trailer, just a couple of minute <clears throat> piece that will kind of give you the idea of what was going on. So this is my way of honoring the people who were devastated by the fires and also honoring the state of Oregon, because if we had more people like Senator Mark Hatfield, we would not be in the situation we are in today. Um, our show is sponsored by Albert Taylor. <clears throat> um, endless possibilities. They work with people with different abilities. They, uh, they have housing for them. They also go in and help if they need just a little extra assistance in their home. They're looking for employees. They need people to work for them. Uh, if you want a career that will be tough, but it will also be rewarding because you'll go home at the end of the day and know you truly made a difference in someone's life. You should check it out. Our other sponsors, Chris Dental Family Dentistry, where everyone matters. <clears throat> and uh, now is the time to get in. Make those appointments for September, October, and November because it's booking up fast and you need to be in there. So here's our uh, Labor Day show, and I hope you enjoy it. And joining us is John and Peggy Devereaux. Um, yeah. They are, they are part of the Albert Taylor gang. Yes. <laughs> How long have you guys been with Albert Taylor, Peggy? Oh, oh I can't remember. I can't remember either. Since the early 80s? Yeah. In the 80s, in there? we couldn't do anything without Josh. Well, you could do a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah, but and Josh takes us uh, to Wendy's, thrift shopping, grocery shopping. You know, I mean, and honestly, uh, they they see the best in people, you know, and um, and people tend to see the best in them. You know, they're honestly some of the most accepting and friendly people that I know. Right. Ellen Wheeler, I'm uh, Deborah Schaefer's. And you guys are longtime residents on the McKenzie. Born and raised. Born and raised, I was a, I was a Helfridge. Well, the idea was a lady was, had posted, her place had burnt to the ground, and she brought a yellow mum up and put it in the yard, and she was just talking about how it made her feel better. We decided that we needed to do something to make everybody feel better, so we went down to McKenzie River Nursery and talked with Greg and Tamara down there, and they made us a heck of a deal on mums, and we just started planting them. I'm Steve Brock and i am been a property owner up here since 2008. I'm here just trying to put my life back together. We just wanted to give a little hope back to people so when they come back to their place there's a nice beautiful yellow mum sitting there and those mums will come back next year. What do you think of these two ladies who on their own are just bringing mums? I think it's wonderful. You know the that's one of the things that in my opinion has really kind of reaffirmed my hope in mankind. This is that selfless attempt to help other people that your neighbors. It just really makes life, it makes it a whole lot rosier. We had talked about it that morning when we got evacuated that, you know, you see it on TV and you think how terrible it is and you get up the next day and go on with your life. And we got up the next day and it's not ever going to be the same again for a long time. And in our lifetime, we'll never see it like it used to be. Finrock was totally decimated. Finrock, the building up there has been there my whole life. There was no place to plant any mums up there. And we put two mums up on the ledge of Finrock itself. 
uh, some low life piece of <clears throat> decided they needed them more than we did, and I put we put two down at Good Pasture Bridge. They also took those. Um, I replaced them, and within a day they'd taken them. They took another one, but it's just I cannot imagine how someone can be so cold hearted. I, I don't even have words. I don't have words. So you keep repl you'll keep replacing them. Of course, of course. Lane Electric did something kind of cool. Well, I we had planted some mums, and when they were out trimming, a lot of their limbs and debris came down. They were putting lines up. Yeah, they are also putting lines up, and they had they saw those mums and they were reaching down and brushing all the limbs and then and making sure the lines were on the other side moving so, their piles that they yeah, had moving stacked their away piles from them. and everything but they wanted to keep those mums because they knew it meant a lot to people yeah that was my uh work truck there and all my good tools burned up and my toy hauler trailer all my stuff i was living there at the time it got burned up, and then my race car Hellcat got burned up. Oh, they're great people. I mean, they care about each other. But you got a few scumbags here and there, but we didn't even care about them half the time. I don't know why. So Mike had his water truck here the night of the fire. Yeah. He was staying down at his house, and every night he was going out on patrols between basically my house and yeah. my brother's house up here with his water truck. and. So anyway, one night about 12.30, he decides he better go on patrol, and he's up putting a spot fire out. I'm not sure where. And, it was right across the street. Oh, so anyway, he says pretty soon this truck pulls over and asks him, what the fuck you think you're doing? Mike goes, what the fuck does it look like I'm doing? I'm putting out this spot fire. He goes, it's not that. He was in his Harley boots and his boxers. That's all I had. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, who are you working for? I said, myself, this is my stuff. I got to save it. He, that's all I had was shorts, my underwear, and my boots. <laughs> so Mary's just talked to me a little bit. You, you've had a pretty rough year. Yeah, cancer, lost my son. Yeah, it's not good at all. She saved my life. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be around. I gave up. I quit. But nah, she wouldn't let me. Because this was my son's property. And he was building the house right when he got killed. And uh, I'm keeping it. And uh, you, you took this beautiful scenery for granted. And it can be gone within just hours. Um, it's just, a, it's devastating to anybody that drives up here. It just makes them, it just feels like there's a big hole in their heart now. I, did, I had no idea until it came up on your site there. The, the one, the... The one that hit me the most, I think there was like three different countries that had different meanings for the mum, but the the one that meant the most to me in that whole thing was it meant rebirth. Um, and so when I was reading through that and after, you know, us planting the mums and that, that was the one that hit me the hardest that, you know, it, that's kind of what we, our thing was, is that there is hope for regrowth and rebirth and um, it'll come you know, it'll come back someday. I mean, people are working hard, and uh, it'll happen. You get, you get a little teary. I do. <laughs> it's tough. I said I drive up and down the highway, and I, this is what I still do. <laughs> Rick Dancer here. Before the fall rush sets in, now is the time to get in to see the dentist. Oregon's best dentist, and still my dentist, is Dr. Michael Bratlin at Chris Dental in Eugene. Dr. Bratlin and his staff are second to none. 
You have a tooth you need crown? Give them a call and they'll get you in ASAP. Remember, at Chris Dental, everyone is welcome, vaccinated or not. A gentleman of the highest order and uh, well respected. He saw a tapestry that very few people saw. Most people see threads. He saw the tapestry. I learned a lot because people would say to me, well, Mark Hatfield, he's a Republican, therefore X, Y, Z. Well, no, he's not that kind of Republican. You can't label him um, that way and, and describe him with any integrity. So the irony of this is that the atomic bomb may have saved his life. And then seeing what the effect of the atomic bomb was on people caused him to devote much of his life to um, the elimination, if possible, of these weapons from the face of the earth. We all owe our present existence, our successes and the good things that we've been able to do for our people. We all owe that to the efforts of the Senate. You cannot make a deity out of somebody. That's wrong. And I think the, the, the folks realize that, that he had some shortcomings too. Like, he was a human being, like everybody else. And I remember going into the meeting, and Mark was sitting in a chair kind of in the middle of the room, and no other senator was sitting around him. And I went and I sat next to him, and by and large, we were able to convince the group we're, we're not going to start taking people's chairmanships away because of one vote. But afterwards, Mark thanked me a lot. He said that was one time when he really felt lonely. But the way he survived the tough times, where he clearly turned to his faith and depended on, on it completely, are the times when we really got that. I think what is perfectly evident is you don't have a person who hedged and trimmed throughout his career and was courageous at isolated moments. You have a courageous person throughout a career who at very specific moments demonstrated that courage in very vivid ways. I think he has left a, a wonderful example for people to follow, but I think individuals have to be willing to lose. And so many just want to get reelected so badly. Uh, Mark Hatfield was ready to lose. I mean, he didn't want to lose, but he was willing to lose if it meant going down over what he stood for. And I, I just I worry that there won't be another one. It's hard to hard to imagine that there could be. I don't know how you'll see another Mark Hatfield, but I hope so. So you can go to that link um, and find, or go to markhatfield.com. Just Google him and you'll find the, um, the copy of the DVD and the, out there on there. Yeah, you see something like that. Um, it's too bad we can't get back to that as people. Um, he told me in an interview <clears throat> um, that we used in this piece, he said that, um, when he ran for the Senate, he was governor of Oregon. When he ran for the Senate, um, Wayne Morse, then a Democrat, uh, supported Mark Hatfield over the other Democrat running against Hatfield for that Senate race because Mark Hatfield was against the war, the Vietnam War. And so was so was uh, Mr. Morse, Senator Morse. Um, and people today say, well, of course he was against the war. It was a bad war. No, at that time in Oregon history, 70 some 75 i think 79 percent of oregonians thought the war was good and but back then they gave you a pass you didn't have to line up with every single position of the candidate and hatfield said if i were to run today i'd probably never make it it's a sad place that we've gotten when we take candidates and because they don't agree with us on every single issue we don't vote for them and look where we are as a state 
we're right where we are because that's what we've done. Because we continue to look for perfect people when we're not perfect. We want balanced budgets when our own balance budgets at home are not balanced. How much debt are you in? Um, not excusing debt, but I'm saying the expectation we have for people today, and, um, you know, look online, it's, it's ridiculous. I'm so glad I didn't win Secretary of State. Um, I'd probably be dead by now. But Senator Hatfield was an amazing man. Um, probably one of the last statesmen, statesmen that we'll see in Oregon in a long time. Um, have a great Labor Day. I'm Rick Dancer. We'll be having more amazing shows all week while I'm uh, on my trip back to Oregon for my kid's wedding and also for uh, a project we're doing on a former uh, community member in Eugene. So um, have a great night. Share this on your page. Let other people know. And if you're in town, uh, maybe we're our sponsors, Buck Sanitary Service, Chris Dental Family Dentistry, and Compton Family Works. Good night. Or Albert Taylor, excuse me. <laughs> See how I am. <laughs>